My last two songs that are conveniently linked as annotations and in the video description have been using quite a bit of electric guitar, so I have been searching for new and interesting ways to get the best guitar sound in Reason. Since Reason 6, guitarists have had several tools to sculpt their sound, but as anyone who has looked at the pedal board of a guitarist knows, there can never be too many effect pedals. With rack extensions, Reason stepped up the game and all kinds of interesting third-party effects units have started to trickle down to the users, and much to my happiness, several guitar-specific effects have also entered the land mostly inhabited by synth and electronic music fans. The one thing that really annoyed me in the past was the Line 6 amp. While it works great in some cases, I found it very difficult to get a really good tone out of it. The new soft tube amps in Reason 8 are a step in the right direction, but there are a few amps in the shop that you might want to take a look at when running an older version of Reason, or even as additions to your rack in Reason 8. Two years ago, Matthias from Propellerhead made a good tutorial about creating a guitar amp combinator. While this has been a great basis for shaping your own sound, I think it's finally time to look at our dusty combinators and see what can be improved with some new goodies from the Propellerhead shop. So let's go shopping. There are currently three really great amps in the propeller head shop, all made by Quasa. Vermilion, something of an all-arounder, Cream, a more high-gain variant for metal music, and Cerberus, a bass amplifier with a really cool name. While all three are worth looking at, we will be concentrating on Vermilion, since it is the most versatile of the three. Now that the amp has been sorted, we need some distortion. While Scream, which is somewhat based on the Tube Screamer, and Pulverizer, with the Rat Distortion Circuit, are still great choices, there are three rack extensions that offer overdrive and distortion targeted specifically for guitar players, and again, you can never have too many different distortion effects. Blamsoft has three pedals in their Shredder series that have been modeled after analog circuits. The DC1 distortion gives you the sound of a classic Boss DS1 pedal, which I don't have to tell you gives it a pretty strong pedigree. The DC9 overdrive comes with a similarly impressive history, being based on the classic Tube Screamer pedal. To round off the selection, there is also the Tube Distortion, which seems to be, at least partly, modelled on the Marshall JCM 800 series amps. It gives you quite a bit of choice in which preamp model you use, and has a built-in tone stack. Now this final one may not be interesting for everyone, but being limited by the phaser built into Reason, I also got the T2 phaser from That Music Company. Another analog modeled effect, it gives you an incredible amount of flexibility and quite an interesting overdrive circuit to boot. Now that we have the shopping sorted, let's put together a combinator suited for anything from jamming after a long day to that song that you've been constructing in your head for the past few days. Let's start off with an audio track and check that we have a signal from the guitar coming in. With that sorted, we can add our first effect. Like Matthias, I prefer starting my signal chain with a little compression, just to smooth out the sound. Right after the compressor, I like to have my distortion and overdrive pedals. This is so that all additional effects will be added to an already overdriven signal. When you add distortion to a heavily modulated signal, you run the risk of making the sound very muddy. This, like anything in music, isn't a very strict rule, and you can try out different things yourself. We will add the Tube, the DC9 and the DS1, going from lower to higher gain. For now, let us bypass all of these. Now for some modulation. Let's add the already familiar CF101 chorus flanger and the UN16 unison. I don't really use the unison very often on the guitar, but I would really hate if there was an empty rack space here. Anyway, let's add our newly acquired T2 phaser and another reason classic, the echo. Don't forget to change the signal from 100% wet to something a bit more usable. I'd say we have some pretty funky modulation going on. Like before, let's bypass them for now. Now for the big one, the amp. Let's add the Vermilion and turn a few knobs. Now I'm pretty sure that my favorite settings will not be the same as yours, so I trust you to find your own defaults. I prefer to use a mostly clean sound on my amp and drive it with my distortion effects. If you're going for a nice crunchy sound though, you can set the amp gain to something a bit more edgy and then add some color with a low gain setting on your favorite distortion pedal. I always tend to end my guitar combinators with an equalizer to roll off some of the high frequencies. This helps control the fizzy sound you get in the high frequencies with some digital distortion effects. It also adds a great place to roll off the low frequencies when you have a bass guitar part later and you need to free up some space in your mix. Just to spice up the sound a bit, I will add the Audiomatic Retro Transformer on the tape setting 
and set it to about 30% wet. We have now completed our basic combinator, but we haven't done any sound sculpting yet. Let's create a few presets for quick access when inspiration strikes. I usually need three sounds, a nice clean, an overdriven rhythm sound, and a lead. For a clean sound, I'm going to skip the drives and go straight to the modulation. I'll add some chorus, a little delay, and enable both of these effects. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Now we shall tackle the programmer. Name the first button as clean and set it so that when the button is in its maximum state, the chorus and the echo are on, and when it's in its minimum state, they are off. Now you can easily just press the first button and get your standard clean tone. Let's move on to the drive sound. I usually don't want much modulation in my distorted rhythm sound, so I'll focus on the DC9 and the tube for this preset. I'll set both gain controls low to medium and mess about with the tone stack a little. There! Now we have a nice fat and crunchy sound. In the programmer, we will rename the second button to overdrive and set it so that it'll turn on the DC9 and the tube in a similar fashion to what we did for the chorus and the delay with the clean sound. Second preset done. Finally, let's tackle the lead. I want the DS1 for this sound with quite a bit of gain. In addition to that, I want the slight phasing sound, so I'll set up the T2 as well as the echo for some delay. Bitchin! Adding the final preset to the programmer should be a piece of cake when you have followed along so far. Now you can use the programmer to switch specific presets on and off, but remember, when you switch on several presets at once, it can be a bit of a mess, so keep the one activated that you want to use. There we are, a nice little combinator to bring into your project when you need your favorite guitar sound. It's also a great base for whatever sound you end up using in your project. Just don't forget to save it, so that you don't need to set it up every time you open Reason. If you like the one I made, you can download it and load it into your project. Check the video description for the link. To use it, you do still need to buy the rack extensions. I hope you've enjoyed this very guitar-centric tutorial, and if you have any further questions, let me know in the comments section. Perhaps I will get a few interesting ideas for future videos. Until then, keep making beautiful music.